welcome to Live at Zero BPM, bringing live music to you. Tonight, it's the Live at Zero BPM Socially Distant Jazz Roundtable, featuring Carrie Frank, Jamie Kime, Dave Hill, and Sinclair Lott. If you care to donate, click on the donate tip jar link in the description or on our website at live at zero bpm.com slash tip jar. And now, let's get to the music with your host, Billy Halting. Hey, welcome everybody out there at Internet Land. Uh, thanks for coming to another Live at Zero BPM Socially Distanced Jazz Roundtable. So uh, before we get started, just a reminder, if you want a tip, the link is in the comments. I'm not the comments, the, uh, the, the description up there. And I also put it in the chat rooms. I'm trying to see who is here already. Normally, people are already chatting away. <laughs> and uh, it's great to see people. Uh, Rick Converse is here. Hey, so he's the first one that's shown up. Uh, so welcome, Rick, and welcome, everybody, to another show. Got a great lineup here. Again, if you want a tip, you can go to live at zero bpm dot com slash tip jar or on Venmo at Z E R O B P M. And if you are watching a an archive, you can still tip for years to come. I will make sure the money gets where it's supposed to go to the guys. So uh, let me just get make sure all these guys are online and let's pull them up right now. Hey, there's everybody. <laughs> yes, all right. So. Uh, I, you, you know, if you were here last week, you know, we ran into some technical difficulties and whatnot. We're hoping we have those resolved uh, so we can have some fun tonight. But occasionally people just get dropped and pop back because we're doing this new version of the software, which allows musicians to come to you in stereo, which is way cooler than the first two shows. It was mono, not as much fun. So uh, let's see. I'm going to introduce everybody really quickly. Carrie Frank on the keyboards. Hi, Carrie. Jamie right, Kine Carrie. on guitar. Sinclair Lott on drums, and Dave Hill on guitar. Now, these are all Hi. L.A. musicians, but Dave has recently relocated uh, yes. because he wanted to support the Buffalo Bills. So, Of course. <laughs> so how's everybody doing tonight? You guys having fun? Great. Excellent. Yeah. Good. So far. Yeah. So far, so we'll good. We'll see how the so, uh, so far. We might as well just get to the music. Oh, well, we got our first tip. My brother Fred. Likes to like to jump on the ball. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> I will thank you. And then Good there he Fred. is. Hello from Minnesota. He's watching in the uh, the cold north. But let's uh, let's go to Carrie here. He's going to be our first guest. And uh, oh, there he is. Hey, Carrie. Okay. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> Good, man. Hey, I just want to talk about so I can kind of introduce you at the same time. But you've toured and recorded with uh, Tedeschi Trucks, Ndugu Chancellor, Marshall Tucker Band, Eric Marienthal, uh, Jane Monheit, Martin Short, Dan Aykroyd, and Bob Mincer amongst others. A uh, lot of time <laughs> yeah. on the road or mostly sessions in town? What have you been doing? Uh, of those names you listed, those were 50-50. Some tour, some just kind of one-off shows, and then some sessions. Bob was one of my teachers at USC when I was oh. doing my grad school, and, and then he played on my first album. And Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. Well, it's uh, it just Thanks. shows, again, the versatility of the musicians in Los Angeles. You know, most people think about jazz mm -hmm. musicians. They think they're just sitting in dark clubs making 50 bucks a night, you know, <laughs> playing straight ahead. Mm -hmm. But the cats here in L.A., you know, everybody plays everything. And so uh, yeah. it's, it's great. And I think also that enhances the way you play jazz when you're playing it as your jazz will influence your rock playing and such. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you do a lot of teaching also. Uh, online yeah. teaching now, I'm supposing, right? Yep, online teaching. Um, still, a lot of the students are in L.A., but luckily because of that, it's uh, they're all spread out throughout the U.S. and a few in Europe. Very cool. And, yeah. And, well, yeah. we'll remind you a couple of times tonight, people out there in Internet Land, any information you want to get, read their bios, their contact, all their social media is on our website, live at Z-E-R-O-B-P-M. And the ad is spelled out. I wasn't thinking when I put that together. <laughs> people would think it was the ad symbol. But that, at the top, it says musicians. You can click there and see everybody. Mm -hmm. You can get a hold of Carrie and anybody else. But now, during this uh, kind of lockdown, and I know they're lifting things a little bit in L.A., but it's not completely yet. What have you been working on personally? Not sure if you can still hear me, but I think oh, I froze. We lost, I'm gonna, if you can't hear me, I'm just going to kick him off for a second, but he'll be back. Uh, one of the things we're working on with this technical thing, and I'm discussing it with the tech support people, is how to get this to stop doing this. There, Carrie. There so is. what I was asking was, uh, what are you working on personally right now? Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm working on, other than teaching and always trying to get my teaching set up better and, and as good as it can be for the student and for myself, um, I'm working on writing some new original songs and arranging some new tunes for uh, whenever I can record my next album. Um, just kind of trying to write a bunch of stuff and have it ready so that I can pick what I want for that album. Now, you played, the both the times you've played here, you playing organ. Is this album going to be mm -hmm. more organ, more keyboard, more ukulele? What's it going to be? This will probably be uh, more organ and probably a little piano on it. No ukulele, sorry. Oh, okay. But, um, the next album. Yeah, mostly the next album. You can yeah. play on my Yacht Rock album. That I'm oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, what are you going to play for us right now? I'm going to do uh, one of my favorite Beatles tunes. This is Here, There, and Everywhere. All right. Why don't you, let me get you up there all by yourself. Yeah, and hopefully and I can switch cameras. Where is it? Carried number one. Okay. Very nice. 
and it didn't drop you in the middle of it. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's just cameras. Yeah, thanks, Carrie. That was really nice. Uh, now, the new album you're working on, is it, they're all original tunes? Are you doing arrangements like that? Or, Gary? Oh, I think he can't hear me. So let's bump him off in there. We'll talk to the other guys. <laughs> Jamie. Oh, and we lost Jamie, too. So maybe we'll jump down to, uh, no, we'll, we'll wait. Jamie will be back in a second. So uh, here he is. All right, Jamie, you're back. Hey. But let me just ask a question of all of you guys that are here right now. What are you working on these days, like personally? Not in, not necessarily a project or anything. Oh, Carrie, by the way, we got the whole piece. So you <laughs> played the all whole right, way cool. through. You may have lost us, but we didn't lose you. So, But what are you guys <laughs> okay. working on in your own personal practice lives these days? Do we all talk at once? Well, you could take turns talking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, Jamie, what are you doing now? I mean, <laughs> that's such a weird question. I mean, it's not a weird question, but uh, what am I working on? Uh, I'm I'm uh, homeschooling my son and uh, cooking dinner every night, and uh, you know, I mean, I'm I'm trying to keep my chops up any way I can, but it's really tough. Right. You know, these are kind of um, tough times for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was right before. You know, right when all this uh, crap happened, I was I was beginning to work on this uh, this trio that I was kind of excited about. Um, yeah, I, was I had some cool that, ideas for that. that that's I one of the questions I was going to ask you: the Butterface trio that you guys played here right. before. Yeah, and you told me yeah. I think the way you described it, you were trying to do something a little different than this typical "Hey, let's get together and I'm just going to play my guitar" sort of thing. Why don't you tell us? Do you have a concept behind it you can talk about? I mean, kind of. Um, it, it, I, I didn't want it to be like a typical kind of power trio or just, you know, um, but I, I had this idea for more, it, you know, I don't want to divulge too much because I don't want anyone to steal my <laughs> brilliant idea. All these millions of people out there. <laughs> write this know. down. Go ahead, <laughs> yeah. slowly. But I, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, I wanted it to be sort of an interactive, an interactive trio that we could add other players into mm -hmm. sort of at will, you know, like if we wanted to add a vocalist or a percussionist or we wanted to right. have someone else join in. But the, the core group was, uh, it was myself, it was Pete Griffin, and it was Andy Sinisi on drums. Cool. And you know, um, I have a little clip of you guys playing, if I may oh just my God. play this. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, very cool. And you guys are obviously more on the fusion end of things than the uh, than the spang a lang straight ahead jazz <laughs> end of things. But I guess I mean I, I don't know I I don't know where we are, but you know I I wanted to have a thing where it was more where it was like where we were kind of incorporating sort of like live real time looping type of stuff, uh -huh. which we ne we didn't really we never really got a chance to 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 work that out or to, or to develop that. But that was something, that was kind of where where we left off with it. Well, I remember you guys you know. talking to me about it. And Pete Griffin was here yeah. last week, and he was doing some stuff with loops. And I think you guys yeah. were preparing to do this sort of thing where you would hook your units together, but then all of a sudden you can't visit anybody. So a lot right. of collaborative right. projects have been put on hold these days. Yeah. And you know people yeah. are passing tracks back and forth, but it's, it yeah. isn't the same as in being in the room and doing that. So. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing a fair amount of recording here at home uh -huh. on my, my rig at home because, like, people will still send me Good. guitar tracks to do. I've been doing a little bit of, like, TV music with a partner of mine. And, uh, like, Pete just sent me something uh, a couple of days ago, and he was just texting me earlier because I'm going to uh -huh. Well, we recorded on a that really weekend. cool, epic piece of Pete's recently. Right. It turned out, yeah. I can't wait to hear the mix on it. It's really kind of cool. So. Uh, yeah, that was a really nice – he's been writing some – the, even this last thing he sent me, I was like, "Damn, his his writing is." Um, is I didn't. Starting to come I up. didn't say this out loud last week, which I meant to say this about Pete. But when we, Jamie and Pete and I toured together with uh, Zappa plays Zappa, and Pete just because of his youth and his energy and everything, I just thought uh, this this guy has a chance to really just 
explode and do great things. So uh, I was happy that, you know, so I can't wait when you guys can get together and do some of that and come back and play. <laughs> Me too. I think it'll be really cool. You know, if, if we can, uh, if we can sort of see the vision through and actually, mm -hmm. you know, materialize it in some way to where it's, you know, actually comes to fruition, that would be, uh, that would be a real nice thing. It's like, I, like, I don't have a specific thing in, but um, just a tiny bit of background briefly is because mm -hmm. like, I'm not the type of composer or writer that will just sit down and like write an entire piece of music from start to finish. Um, I will, uh, I tend to write in little tiny snippets and little bits. And I've got just, uh, you know, I've got gigabytes of those little tiny bits, which at this point in time have for me become very closed off and very, you know, mm -hmm. um, they're no longer open-ended for development anymore in my mind. So I was yeah. like, well, it'd be great if we could somehow like just throw these out into the, into the open in a real time sort of format so that they can just sort of like get developed and turn into something oh, spontaneously. Like springboards for other so, ideas. And uh, I'm frozen up on my end. Okay. I don't know if anyone else can see or hear I can me, still, but I'm going to We can still hear Jamie, here. but let me just okay. kick him off and he'll come back in a second. <laughs> and again, I apologize for this. I am working with tech support, but uh, he'll be back. It doesn't take very long. So, Jamie, we got that whole story. I Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you were fine on our end, but if you couldn't hear me, All I right. couldn't ask a question. So, yeah. But one right. thing I was going to say about composing, and I found this myself, is sometimes when you collaborate, uh, two things. You get another perspective, which it's like improvising. If you're playing and the drummer does something, it gives you an idea to do something other than you may have been planning on doing. And right. kind of the same thing with writing. And the other thing I like about collaborating is if you're writing a section you don't really know if it's good or not, your partner will tell you <laughs> if something's yeah. like, yeah, that's no, let's just do something different. It's like, okay. And I think it's the, the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts in, in a lot of ways with composing other people. Yeah. I mean, and it, a lot of times it could just be if you're writing with someone and then they have a, like I had to write something last week for a, for a, a friend of mine who runs a pedal company and he has mm -hmm. this, you know, and he had this new pedal, and I was like, well, I'll write something to kind of, you know, using the pedal. And I had a basic idea for a, an A section, and then I didn't really know where to go. And then, you know, a, a friend of mine who's like a writing partner of mine that I work with a lot, and uh, he's like, why don't you do something in like seven and then take it into something in four? And that was enough to like, to kind of give me that, that little poke in the butt to where it's like, oh, okay, I got it. And then it just all came together, and I wrote the whole thing really quickly. So. Yeah, you know, it'd be great to do a show where the, the whole time we just talk about how did you get that idea, you know? Cause, yeah. You know, I, yeah. My teacher, Emil Richard, said there was a guy years ago that hired a plane to fly him really low through the New York skyline, and he took pictures that he mapped the skyline onto music paper, and that's how he got it. He, he also wow. got a hefty fine for flying that low in the city. <laughs> but, sure. Yeah, but that, hey, you had to have been... That had to have been pre-2001. <laughs> yes, it was. Well, hey, you want to play something for us? Uh, I can try. I'm not really a solo guitar player. I work well with a band, but... I'm, uh, well, that's one of the things we were talking about, and I've known Jamie for years, and he's always like, I, I just play in bands, and you're not like yeah. one of those cats yeah. that sits around and, and plays by themselves yeah. or jams over loops, but, you know, people want to hear you play something, so... I'll play a little bit of something. Um, okay. Let me put you up here, and... Uh, All right. This is a, a portion of a thing that was on a, an album I did a few years ago. Um, it's a, easy to do as a solo piece. It's called Philadelphia. So it's just, a, I'll just play a couple of sections of it. I'm not going to do any like, you know, super shreddy solo and stuff right now. So. <laughs>
There you have it. Sorry about that. I was in the wrong program and I hit the wrong key combination. But uh, but you're back. You were really on cool. Tinder, weren't you? You were but, on Tinder. No, I was. I was texting back and forth. I was just getting some comments here. Uh, Pete Griffin chimed in and said to get back to work on his tune. So uh, he'll get back to it, Pete, when he's done here. No. And, then, then no. <laughs> uh, and Phil, do you remember Phil from uh, Ontario, Canada? He used to come to all the Buffalo shows. Yeah, he's yeah, I do. Phil O'Connor, I yeah, think. Yeah, he says he's right? still yeah. listening to your CD all the time. Oh, thank what, you, Phil. Tell us about that, that CD. What was the name of it again? It was called Alley's. Uh, it, I put it out at the end of 2004, and... Um, Again, it was just one of those things that was a byproduct of just collecting years worth of snippets of of uh, of things on on the rec you know that mm -hmm. I just had and compiling them and I got Mike Keneally involved uh, to kind of help me produce it and you know yeah. Mike came in as a fresh set of ears to say like well why don't you take this little three second thing and t marry it to this little six second thing and then write a section to bridge this together and bring in this one. And, um, you know, I, I think of everything on the record, there might have only been like two or three things that were completely written. And mm -hmm. I've frozen up again, so I'm going to do uh, that. Okay, well, I'm going to go back to the big group. Uh, let's get back here. <laughs> hey, everybody. Oh, we've lost. Oh, there's Jamie's coming back. K Jamie, just so you know, yeah. we heard that whole story. And people okay. out there, when they say they're frozen, it doesn't mean their send to us is frozen. It means my send back to them freezes. So, uh, yeah. and it's only an issue when they can't hear us anymore. But you got your whole story in about Mike Keneally helping you out picking this six yeah. and so you yeah. your six second, your three second things. You had nine seconds. You added that to a. Pre <laughs> yeah, you know, but and it was great. I I was able to get like I had a. The, the drummer was a, a old friend of mine named Cliff Allman, uh, who now mm. he's lived in New York for many years, and he's become somewhat of a of a big deal in the drum community. And uh, but I've known him since we were, uh, you know, much younger, and because we both grew up in San Diego, and yeah. Um, and yeah, and I like Pete played on it. Rico Bellard was on it. You were on it. I was on uh, it. Yeah, I had uh, I had Ty Bailey played on some of it, and uh, Ar Arlen Oscar played on some of it. And awesome. yeah, it was a yeah, Mitch Manker played a little bit on it. It was it was a lot of fun to do, and to finally actually, you know, after years and years of just, you know, playing, you know, being a schlepping kind of side man, to actually have something of my own. To step I don't know that front. I'll ever do another one, but you know, we'll see. Maybe. I get <laughs> it. I get it. Yeah. But speaking of doing albums, uh, Mr. Sinclair Lott, can you hear us? Oh, but your microphone's not on, Sinclair. See, Sinclair is such a big deal. He's got his own engineer there helping him. But no, we're not getting your microphone. Okay, well, let's <laughs> let's move on over to Dave Hill. Oh, I we'll come back I, to Sinclair. No, no, I, I'm sorry, Sinclair. I may have you muted. I, hear me? I right had now? you muted because you were... You did. Oh, see, <laughs> you're, you knew, you're, you're the one that needs the engineer. <laughs> you were clicking sticks around when Jamie was soloing. <laughs> was okay, to, you muted me. Yeah, you, that, I well, muted you. Yeah. I only have 50 screens okay. up right now. <laughs> I just, where's the right. one? Where's the one? So Sinclair, like I was saying, you know, Jamie was just talking about doing the solo album, and you've got a new album coming out, right? I do. I have. It's called Long Story Short. It's going to be on Blue Canoe, which is a label out of Las Vegas. Wow, there's and, there's uh, labels. So it's a record, huh? <laughs> there's labels these days. Yeah, there. Yeah, there is actually. Cool. Um, but um, it's something I've had in the can for a while, and. I'm hoping to play a tune off the record, and I'll well, play live drums to it. it. Yeah, go ahead. We're hoping you will too, but let me just get up to you and I here. So, hey, but I want to just talk, uh, for those of you who don't know Sinclair, he's kind of a big deal. Uh, he's played with uh, Freddie Hubbard, spent a, some time with Frank Zappa, Diane Reeves, Mose Allison, Vanessa Williams, Big Joe Turner, Tierney Sutton, Otis Rush, Eric Gale, Mike Miller, and a host of others. Uh, and it was a real treat having you come into the studio the first time with Jeff Miley. And, well, uh, Billy, it was a pleasure for me. You know, I want to tell you that this platform you're putting all your time into is fantastic, especially because well, there's no live gigs. And uh, every I've been here twice. This will be my third time, and it's an absolute pleasure. And I know everybody that plays looks forward to it. So yeah, I, I'm kudos for that to getting back to the live shows. For those of you who are new to this, this is not how we normally do the show. We've been having full bands come in and play, COVID-safe environment with masks on and that sort of stuff. 
uh, at distancing, but with the, the kind of safe at home rules in LA, which they recently softened a little bit, but not quite enough for us to have guys back in the studio. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But uh, right. uh, you've got the records in the can. When is it going to be out? Uh, in the spring. Oh, good. I'm not sure. I don't have a release date, but yeah, that's, that's what next month. For. I mean, two months, March. That's pretty close. Well, uh, we'll have you back on to talk about smarter. that, or we'll send something out to everybody. Okay, great. Thanks, Bill. But, you know, one Much of the questions I wanted to ask you, and you're practically, like, one of the things that's great about Sinclair that everybody talks about is his musical approach to the drums. Just, it's, I don't want to use words like, he sounds like a musician, because that's kind of a terrible thing to say. <laughs> but there are Especially drummers who play drums, drummer, and there are drummers yeah. who play music, and you're definitely one of those cats that, that plays the music. And I, did, is there any secret to developing that approach, or is it just that's just who you are? Well, you I, I started on piano when mm -hmm. I was a kid. It's the first instrument, and so that sort of got my ear headed in that direction. And then when I took up drums, the melodies were already there. So, mm -hmm. you know, and the framework for melodic music was there already. So, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of technique involved in studying drums, and... It's endless, really, and the stuff guys are doing now is amazing. But uh, I've always, my head has just always gone towards playing form and melody on the drums. So, cool. Well, what are you going to play for, for us right now? You want to go with that? Okay. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, let's play with the track there. This, this album is my first foyer into writing, and I gave myself to get the ball rolling kind of an assignment for the first tune, and that was just to write ahead over a standard 32 bar jazz form, an AABA form. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did and I got guys into the studio that I like to play with. Bob Shepard plays sax on this and Tigran okay. Hamasian on piano and a great bass player named Danny McKay. So um, let's try and get this up and running. You'll okay. recognize the form right away, so. Cool. Seeing clear a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. 
All right. That was very cool, St. Clair. So, uh, are we, okay, you're, you're Thank there. Thank you. That was great. Hey, you got a comment from Steve Marsh. Thanks. Says, burning and tasty as always. Steve, hey buddy. Thank you. <laughs> also, Dave Simmons says hi to each and every one of you individually. Toby does a lot of uh, promotion for us, gets people. And she says wowza to that. Uh, let's see what else we get. Phil O'Connor, Jamie, back when you were playing, Phil said uh, very, 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 very nice. So, oh, and then Jamie didn't even hear that. Okay, well, <laughs> we're going to go on. Oh, but I forgot. Uh, Wendy Frank says uh, dad and I are, are listening. So, Terry, I'm guessing <laughs> she knows my, you. My mom and dad. It's awesome. It's great yeah. to have the support right. of family. Oh, let's get Jamie back on here. Jamie Kime. Hey. So, that, uh, 50, that 56K dial-up modem you're using is killing, Billy. <laughs> yeah. It's crushing. <laughs> <laughs> it's crushing. You know, the funny thing is, like, I'm looking at all. I've got all, not only this, but I've got all the technical stuff up, and I'm not even pushing my CPU and my throughput bandwidth is not even near what uh, my computer and my stuff can handle. So... You know, they're going to get a strongly worded email from me about these problems. This is uh, kind of ridiculous here. I'm going to write my congressman. Why, I and say, Can you get this fixed? <laughs> it's, it's like a rolling, rolling disappearing. But, uh, but that's okay. So, uh, Sinclair, that was, that was very cool. That's the tune you wrote? Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, I wrote the head. And as I said, it's a standard jazz form. Yeah, very, very cool. Recognizes. Hey, yes, so I, but great. just before we go on to Dave Hill, who's coming back in right now, uh, Playing with Frank Zappa, do you remember who you who was in the band back then? Sure, I do. Um, it was Ray White, Ike Willis, and uh, Tommy Mars, of course, and Arthur Barrow was playing bass. Wow. And of course, Frank. So, so you know, uh, Jamie Ed Mann does. Was not doing it. Jamie does the. Uh, which band is it you're doing, Jamie? What do they call themselves? Well, they just call themselves the Zappa Band, and ah. it's uh, it's it's Ray, and it's uh, it's Robert oh, Martin. Oh, great, man. And Scott Tunez yeah. and Mike Keneally and uh, and Joe Travers is playing drums and and I'm and fantastic I'm, and they're on uh, I'm batting cleanup you know so <laughs> <laughs> it's very cool so so what Sinclair what year was that would that have been like a uh, nineteen two? yeah exactly right eighty yeah nineteen eighty okay That's cool, a long cool. Time good ago band think about it. yeah it was, but it goes it goes band. fast. Well, uh, uh, just to give some shout outs, Rick Converse, who was the first one to speak up, there was, he has sent in a tip to you guys. So have Brian and Corinne. So thank you for that. And also, it looks like Wendy Frank just tipped us. So thanks, Mom and Dad. Yep. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you guys for doing that. Uh, every little bit helps. It goes to the musicians. We, we actually split it evenly between all of us. Uh, there's nothing that comes off the top or anything. It's just uh, trying to find a way to get musicians Doing something, playing, making uh, a little bit, so every bit helps in these tough times. Taco Bell, here that we come. Yeah, yeah. extra <laughs> at the guacamole, please. Yeah. So uh, you menu. I'm going to move on to Dave Hill here, and uh, let's see. Hey, Billy. If I can pick the right screen for Dave. There. Oh no, that's I'm Gary. Here. Hey, Hello. Okay. I'm trying so to, much. and that's Jamie. I'm <laughs> going to get Jamie. this right. Dave Hill, <laughs> I, here I am. There's there a is. button I can click, but there's, there's also key commands, and I'm thinking, okay, I'll be cool and use the key commands, but it's just like I totally, totally lamed out. Dave, You're not ready for key commands yet. Yeah, I gotta. I should just blue tape mark all of them and put a little picture of each guy on the key commands. So, hi, Dave. That's how are a you? sweet. That's a sweet telly, Dave. Oh, thanks. It's nothing special. Something mid '90s, I think. When you used to be yes. able to just buy a guitar that was decent from Fender for like 600, 650 bucks. Remember those days? Yeah, I think it was It's like 1995 era. Yeah. But uh, good to be here, guys. You guys all sound great, man. S Sinclair, that was swinging, man. Awesome. Thanks. Jamie, I missed, I missed, I, I heard the first couple of, I heard the first couple of chords of your piece and then it dropped out and I did, and then I picked up and you were already done. I'm well, bummed. you can That was actually the, part of the, that was part of the performance. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that was those six seconds were great, man. Well, Dave, Thanks, you know man. you can I'm going for kind of a Philip Glass thing. You know, you can find yeah. the archives on our website. <laughs> okay, go back and listen to that segment. So, uh, yeah. uh, Dave, uh, known for yes. years. Let's see. And you, you recently, uh, you've been working on. What are you working on these days? You have a new album thing you're working on. I can't remember if you started you know, something. I've been, I've been thinking about answering that question because i've been hearing all you guys talk um you know actually it's like a like a lot of things that jamie is saying and even and and carrie you know like 
we musicians end up with like gigabytes, like we're all talking about of music ideas, right? About three years ago, I, I started a project uh, in town with Hussein Jeffrey at his studio. You guys probably all know Hussein at his studio. And I recorded about eight or 10 songs and I've been pretty much, you know, I've worked on them feverishly for the last, you know, since that time. But I got to the point where I almost didn't really like what I was had recorded because I was kind of done with all the music. Does that mm -hmm. ever happen to you guys when you start writing stuff? Absolutely. It, it's, like, it's like, I don't want to release that anymore. So I, I've written more material and I'm actually, uh, it, it's been recorded. I recorded a lot of it at my home studio before I left town. And I've actually, I like the new stuff that I've recorded mostly in my home studio better than the stuff I did three years ago so I've got more than enough material it's just now finishing up the last three pieces that I've been working on um, you know since I, I left town but you know to be honest actually I've been working on a lot of solo guitar stuff and playing acoustic guitar um, I have found a new connection to playing um, in my in my in-laws house where I'm staying now they have this beautiful hardwood floor that just sounds like a great studio and I play my Taylor guitar and I've just been inspired playing solo guitar pieces and um, as well as working on my my recordings in the basement um, and I still teach you know I still teach online I teach at MI and they've been able to kind of migrate to the zoom world like every other teacher in school has so that keeps me pretty busy you know that's great and like Jamie and I have a kid as well so <laughs> Keeping, oh, right. uh, keeping my kid, you know, my, my daughter from not spending 24 hours a day on, you know, the computer. It's tough. Right. So you've got two CDs out, four, two seasons yes. and New World. Oh, did we lose? Oh, let me, like, right. just, let me kick Dave off and I he'll come it. back so he can hear me. Uh, <laughs> well, Dave has two CDs out. One is called, uh, what did I say, Two Seasons. The other one's called New World. Here's Dave. Dave, tell us about the, your two CDs. Okay. Or two albums. What do we call them yes. these days? <laughs> I guess you'd call them albums, projects, yeah. Um, well, you know, it's funny. Um, they were recorded uh, six years apart. The first one was 2005, I think. The second one was 2011 or 10. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I haven't listened to them uh, in a while. Like, you know, most of us kind of, after we were done with something, it's kind of we're done with it. But I've gone back and, and had to listen to a few tunes just for some other things I had to play. And it's funny that, you know, I, I feel like I've grown as a writer since then. But I, I will say that one of them is my first one was a little bit more contemporary jazz. I had Greg Karukas, in fact, who I was playing with a lot at the time, who's actually played uh, in your. And in fact, I've played there with uh, at zero ppm. So it was a little bit more contemporary jazz, sort of in the Pat Metheny sort of sound, which I've always loved. And then my second CD that came out in 2011 was a little bit more funky fusion, more more in the Yellow Jackets, mm -hmm. uh, Robin Ford's kind of sound, and I used more distortion. And that was a fun project. And in fact, I uh, I used uh, or I guested uh, the Yellow Jackets, or three of the members of the Yellow Jackets, on that record. In fact, you played on it as well, if you probably remember. I, I do remember. It's always fun to play and, Dave's stuff because it's he he gets great cats to play, so it's just. Yeah. It's so easy to just make a musical statement on it because it's not you're not like oh god I got to figure out something to play on this track that I hate. <laughs> it's you just know, the, fun the, to work on your music. The coolest thing, thank you, Billy. The, the coolest thing about working with the Yellow Jackets was I was going to have them guest on one song that I'd written. It was to me r was really reminiscent of like a Russell Ferrante tune, and mm -hmm. so I called Jimmy Haslip, who I've known for you know off and on for years, and I said, Jimmy, maybe you guys could do a guest on that one track. And he came over and we, you know, he kind of helped me sort of tighten up. And then he goes, you know, Dave, as long as we're going to be doing a session for a tune, why don't we just do more songs? Because as long as we're going to go to a studio, why don't we just, we can nail some more stuff down. Nice. So I was like, well, that would be cool. So we ended up doing four songs at a place wow. called, um, it was, I can't remember, it was in Big Kitchen Studios. It was in Van Nuys. I'm like, I can't remember the name of it now, but it was a pretty big studio. Um, but man, the Yellow Jackets were so on point when I oh, when I, I had them imagine. record it was like they rehearsed once one afternoon in my studio the next day we recorded when I heard these guys play the tracks down it was like wow that's why they sound like they do on their on their records it's like they nailed it to the wall the first time the second take was only just to have an option right yeah and I was like it was like so easy to get music out of those guys because they just got it and they just were so professional and so cool and um and then I supplemented the rest of those songs with tunes I'd recorded 
in my own studio. So it was about like ten songs. Very cool on that. Um, yeah, very melodic, very musical, uh, very accessible, but not smooth elevator jazz stuff. You know, that just groovy stuff. Now you played here twice with mm -hmm. with a couple of different bands, and I have a little clip. Sure. Let's just roll. Hey, roll, Dave. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, yeah, there we're back. <laughs> the the, cool. the hotkeys are a little sluggish. It's, uh, that wasn't me that time. <laughs> no, that was very cool. That was with, uh, that was well, nice. tell them about the band that you brought in. That was with Greg Karukas on keyboards, Adam Cohen on bass, and Joel Taylor on drums. Yeah, killer group. And it I, was a lot it, of fun that night. It was so fun playing. I've, I've played gigs with Joel, but never my own music, and it was such a treat to actually hear Joel play my own music. And I've, I've played with really, you know, my f favorite drummers around town and everything, but it, you know how it is, you just have different experiences with guys playing your music. It's just fresh. And, yeah. and Joel was just so good. I just, just uh, it was such a pleasure playing with, uh, with those guys that night. That's cool. So uh, you're gonna play a little something for us. What are you gonna play for us? You know, as much as I'm dropping out, I'm a little bit concerned about playing to my, my track but i'd like to do it and i just do it I'm just remember if looks like we've frozen doesn't mean that you froze just keep playing barrel through dave you'll be fine <laughs> okay if That's you know do. if if you freeze on our end which nobody has so far i will bump you off and just keep the track rolling and jump back in and uh and just let's just go with it okay i'll All set right. up a little bit of what this is this is a tune that i've never really re i've never really released i've recorded it but i never did anything with it because it's very straight ahead sounding i don't really record music like this but i thought it was kind of a fun uh head to write out and it was just i really got a great um recording it with my guys in my studio this is probably geez, five years ago now but here it is in a sample and i'm gonna play over it here we okay. go it's called uh sneaking up on you Well, of course, uh, <laughs> we can have the whole conversation keep, with David. Playing, so Dave. here we're going to bring him back in. And... Thank you. 
Great, Dave. Yeah, I right now. I'm sorry. I'm trying to fix the link on the on the website. I guess uh, is not correct. So, uh, so can you do that again? No, uh, you're, you're fine, Dave. Uh, no, from the I top, just, please. One I more just, time. I have to fix. One more time. I have to fix the link on the website. Was it did did it go out at any time? Was did you guys? No, hear it was all the fine. Way no. <laughs> okay. You blanked out for a few seconds. Yeah, it was just yeah, a few no, seconds, and you handled it like okay. a pro. So well, that I was very cool. Use my mouse. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a couple of comments. <laughs> okay, so if anybody's wondering, I fixed or I replaced the link on the website, so that should be correct right now. We are streaming. I was wondering why our concurrent okay. users are a little up. I, I test the heck out of those things, but occasionally something gets through. Anyway, Joe Rosam, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, says, Rosam, beautiful, yes. Dave. Rosam? Says yes. beautiful. Hey, Joe. We got a couple. Uh, Rick Converse says tasty tune. Rick said also that he's got both of your CDs. Rick Converse. That's right. And I he know also Rick. has a live at zero BPM T-shirt. Merch is for right sale. On. I'm not going to put you guys through my commercial again, but uh, go to the website. <laughs> this helps uh, defray the recurring costs every month of the extra internet and the software and all that sort of stuff. If you could want to help out, get a T-shirt and a hat. Ooh, it's nice swag, man. There we go. The black, the black and white one is wow. uh, is a pretty good. Uh, I like that one. The yellow yeah. is uh, the yellow. The white looks. Sorry, the blue one looks really good also. It doesn't work that's as well. That's definitely fun. yacht rock. Yeah, this yeah, is that's, definitely that's, yacht that's, rock. That's definitely a marine. It's got a Marina Del Rey thing going on. It does. This one works yeah. better on the boat than the black one. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so if you need that, you can find it live at zero bpm dot com slash shop. Uh, my buddy Chris Cisneros, a guitar player from South Carolina, he says, bravo, Dave. And uh, I'm trying to think. There's a couple of Neil says, hi from Gotham. <laughs> oh, uh, so, I don't know. Uh, Neil, I kept trying to find. He's in the uh, Facebook room, and I'm trying to see what his last name is. But it's uh, it was a while back. Dave Anderson is here. Hey, Dave. He's playing here for cool. drummer. Yeah. And right, uh, Rick Converse says. Hey, Dave. Uh, oh, Mark Van Allen says, hi, Sinclair, and hi, Carrie. Yeah, hey, Mark. All right, Mark. Uh, oh, Rick, yeah, Rick Covers has a question in. for Dave Hill. He says, okay. what prompted sure. the move to the cold? Or do you want to you tell know, us? That's, <laughs> uh, you know, it was, just a, it was just a bunch of things. You know, it was like the time, I think, for in the real estate market for us to sell because we'd, I'd owned that, my house since the 90s, early 90s, and it was the real estate value was just so overpriced. I thought I'd never be able to afford my house if I had to buy it today. So we kind of cashed out of the LA market. And you know, with everything else that was happening with no playing and my ability to teach any, anywhere, and we didn't know when, oh, I guess I'm, no, you're, but you're we didn't going. know where we were gonna, um, we were gonna start up again. No band I was playing in was able to play live. So we're probably gonna stay out here on this side of the country for uh, you know, another period of time, maybe move to Nashville, maybe uh, to Charlotte, North Carolina, somewhere on the East Coast to be closer to my wife's side of the family. That's but cool. I will say this, I do again? miss the California weather. Well, I it's pouring down rain about, right now, uh, so you're not. Yeah. Three right. or four driveways <laughs> worth of snow. Yeah, so we're getting that one of our four days of rain right now. <laughs> yeah. It's like, the, uh, it's, it's like the, the news people out here. It's like the, all, the, the whole year long, it's like, oh, my God, we're in this horrible drought drought we're all gonna die it's it's you know get your get your things in order because you know life as we know it is over because we haven't had rain in like nine months we get like one day of rain it's like we get it's like when will it end when will it ever end <laughs> rain i heard i heard you guys are just getting dumped on out there right big big rainstorm this week i mean Tonight, you know to, yeah 
to find big. You yeah, know, it's big for out here. Like it rains they, for a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. It was supposed to start yesterday, but it didn't start till late, just till just like an hour ago. Yeah, anyway, about an hour you know, ago. We're, we're having so much fun. We're running way over time, but we're gonna sneak through all this. But uh, Catherine on YouTube asked, "Hey, is the guitar player single?" She hasn't said hey. which one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, uh, oh my God! Well, is this a dating is, service, Billy? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, but you can yeah, find their you can find their contact info on the website. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she'll tell us which one she wants to know. I know one of them isn't, and I think the other one might not be, might might be. I don't know. So. Yeah, Dave. I, I don't mean to drastically make a left mm -hmm. turn here, but there was actually we were kind of on to something. I wanted mm -hmm. like I didn't know, Dave. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that you had. Uh, moved but i've been sort of completely off of social media for several months now so i feel like mm -hmm. i've been living in a a bit of a cave um you know i feel like i've moved away and i've lost all contact yeah. with everyone that you know, I know. What, but i was <laughs> i was thinking about it the other day and you and i have known i'm gonna age ourselves here you and i've known each other since 1982 I know. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, you're probably one of the people that I've known out here the longest, even though I don't see you regularly. Right. It's funny how far right. back we go. You know what? It's exactly. another crazy thing. I'm reading this book by T uh, Ted Templeman right now, an uh, autobiography mm -hmm. kind of thing about his producing mm -hmm. uh, history. And it's a fascinating book. You guys really should check it out. And he makes a reference to Eddie, Eddie Van Halen in particular, because in, obviously he produced six of the Van Halen sure. records. Yeah. And in, and he also talks about uh, Eddie at the same time um, playing with Alan Holdsworth. And you remember that Eddie sat in with Alan Holdsworth the year that we I was went there. to school. Wasn't yeah, that crazy was that we were in I, we were in that same wow. experience together? Yeah. It was like history, yeah. man. Yeah, that was a at, great, uh, great time. At to MI be. in the hallway. Oh, what? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> ah. now we may <laughs> never know what happened at MI in the hallway. <laughs> Jamie, will be back here. He is. <laughs> Okay. Am I in the it, hallway? It was one of those. Yeah. It was one of those. Go ahead. Finish the story, Jamie. Well, at Am I in the hallway? There's that picture of of, of Jeff mm -hmm. Berlin, Alan Holdsworth, Eddie mm -hmm. Van Halen, and it was Gary Husband playing drums. Sure. And right. and mm -hmm. I, I think you might have been in the room too. I was there. It was in I, the old Am I building in P2 mm -hmm. performance room too. Sure. I was yeah. right there. As, as a matter of fact, all another bit of trivia. I was standing. Remember how P2, it's like you walk up the stairs from Hollywood Boulevard, and then there was like the big double doors that go into this big performance room they had called P2. And I was standing mm -hmm. back there because people were jam-packed, and I was like almost out in the hallway, and mm -hmm. Eddie Van Halen came up behind me and mm -hmm. was had a six-pack of beer, or it was sure. probably malt liquor, under his arm, no. wearing Heineken, his guitar. I remember it. Yeah. yeah, and just in these ripped-up jeans, he's like, I need to get in there. And I was like, holy shit. I go, follow <laughs> me, and I, and I, and he... And I walked him in to the room yeah. like you could walk around the room down that hallway. Uh -huh. And I opened the door and it went right on stage. And then I followed him, him in and I ducked right down in front and I like crouched down in front. And I said, oh, yeah, watch. that was a oh, special yeah. time for sure. Definitely. Yeah, it's man. just it's just weird to be reading these books about these historic times in the music business. And they seem like they were within our lives, but they're like actually, you know, 30 years ago, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. Cool. And yeah. then I, I, I met Eddie at one of our rehearsals, Jamie. He came into. Yeah. Yeah. He came, really? he came up to the house. Yeah. He came, he, well, he was supposed to play with us and then he uh, he kind of got cold feet and didn't want to play. But he hung out like for the afternoon and and then he came. That was that was the show we were doing at Nokia when we were opening for Jeff Beck. Right. And he yeah. came to the oh. show. And it was the weirdest oh. experience because I, st I st you know, I stand stage left and then right to off to my left you know there's the stage curtain and then right behind that curtain mm -hmm. so just like maybe six feet from me there's a road case and eddie was sitting right there <laughs> watching the whole show so yeah. every time i would play and do anything i'd look over and eddie would be going you know, like, <laughs> and it's one like, of those moments so, in your life yeah that this you'll is so surreal right now <laughs> oh man cool. how unnerving yeah that's, yeah that's totally great. unnerving what an experience yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have a, a couple of, okay, uh, somebody, oh, somebody had a comment for, well, I guess Rick said it's Rainageddon <laughs> right now. Yeah. Uh, Ginger yeah. Durgan, who's one of our regulars, says hi. I know she knows Jamie very well. Hey, and Ginger. we also have a shout out to all of you guys uh, from Guillermo. Mm -hmm. Says a nod to all of you. Thanks. Special shout out to Dave Hill and David Anderson. It's been a while, guys. Stay safe, everyone. So thanks. Uh, nice. Yeah, I guess, uh, nice. you know, we're running a little late, but I want to get to, I think, 
I think it's time for... Let's see if this will work. Yes, you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's time for... It's a game show. in music. <laughs> I, 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 I had to create wow. some cheesy animations for the show. Well, you, su you, you got, succeeded. I, you got to keep the audience interested. You know? you, it's not just, I mean, you guys are all so beautiful, but they, you got to have to throw some eye candy up there occasionally. So anyway, we're going to do this thing we call Conversations in Music. We're going to play the blues. And if, with all the latency and the weirdness in the Internet, you guys are going to just entertain us a little bit together. So let me switch to the four camera and we'll get rid of my face. There we go. Okay, so and you want to oh, start it wow. out, Carrie? Sure. So we're going to still do a, a yes. blues and G. Yep. And Dave will be back on by the time it's his turn. We're to going. Cl we're going clockwise. We're going clockwise. Okay, sure. All right. All right. Let's see. Uh, everyone remember their G blues scale? Yeah. Yes. All right. One, two, uh, uh, two, three, four. This is kind of fun and maybe a little silly, but uh, like my, my beautiful friend Juliet says, the, this is the only reason to come back. Really, the only reason? <laughs> I think she might wow. say hey, it's the best reason. Holy but uh, Juliet is an actor friend of wow. mine. And she's been incredibly supportive. As have, we have all the, uh, all the regulars here. Uh, Joe Rosam says, sweet. Rick Converse says, interesting segment. The latency almost doesn't make a difference. It flows well. So there you go. <laughs> it's, <laughs> what do you know? No, it's not the car, it's the driver. It's the five, four drivers up there. Uh, and uh, Rick Converse says it's like a musical chair's ending. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> or Duck cool. Duck Goose. Yeah, so normally we right. have everybody play twice, but we're, we, we're a little late. We got some time, but um, before we go, I just want to 
Does anybody have like a cool musical concept they really feel like sharing with our audience tonight? Hmm. Something wow. you're working on. Well, now, Dave, actually, I'm going to go to Dave because he and I talked about this earlier. You said you were working on a uh, you're working on a study in triads, open triads these days. Yeah, yeah. And uh, okay. can you just play a little bit of that for everybody? Sure. I know you just went, but do a little bit of this for us, and, and maybe you can tell us ahead of time what you're talking about. You guys can hear that? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's open voice triads. I, I'm not sure if this term applies to uh, p uh, piano instruments, but gu on guitar, it's basically just instead of playing a, a triad in, in tertian harmony thirds, right? You would just put an octave between one of the notes. So in this case, let's say the third was instead of being here would be higher up. It'd be up an octave, right? So I started uh, realizing that all these simple three-note triads voiced in open string chords or open voice triads sound much more complex even though they're just basic triads. So I wrote a little study using all these different kinds, types of open string triads or open voice triads, sorry, uh, to just put it together for a student. And I just came up with a little solo piece. So I'll play it that. And it's more or less just triad chords. Okay, here we go. Dave cuts out. Keep playing. I, I, while he was playing, yeah. I was working on my strongly Beautiful. worded email to tech support. <laughs> there it is. really beautiful yeah just just not real jazzy chords almost almost classical sounding you know I yeah yeah it's very i mean phil o'connor said really it nice. sounds amazing rick converse says a very restive sound those triads toby yeah. says soothing uh juliet was said so fun i think she was talking about the trading fours <laughs> uh ralph yeah. battle says well-tempered davier Hey, hey, Ralphie. <laughs> yeah. oh, man. Clever, oh. Ralph. I'm going to give you the, the clever yeah. award. Uh, that's a good one. I think there's a couple other ones I, I, I've missed. Oh, uh, Wendy Frank liked the fours also. Uh, <laughs> oh, Juliet, uh, she said the best part of the show was the animation. That's what she meant. It wasn't the trading fours. <laughs> the only reason to come But back again, because. really? That was yeah. the best part? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody Dave, that was cool. That's like that very, uh, very, uh, like Brian Wilson, you know, like the... It's like some of that pet sound. I've always yeah. loved that sound of like taking triads and. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you hear cool. all the notes of the triads just yeah. open up so you can really, they're real clear. It's just, it's almost yeah. uh, like Bach or something. I just, I'm really getting into yeah. it. Ted Green had this, I used to study with Ted Green and he would do uh, mm -hmm. like where you take four note chords, seventh chords, and you would mm -hmm. just kind of, he, he had this system of organizing harmony and he had these mm -hmm. he called it the v system where you'd organize like chords into voicing groups a voicing group five was always my favorite because it was just basically stacked fifths okay, yeah, yeah, sure. so that's like a major yeah. seven which you know normally on guitar is this you know silly uh, right, right. but you can just explode that out One, yeah. Seven, yeah yeah yes. you know those things just sound you just 
a dr just a drop-in replacement for any standard, you know, garden variety chord, as they used to call them at GIT. You know, yeah. you know, you and play one of those. For those yeah. Those solo performance, solo when you need uh, like bottom string stuff and upper harmony, they're great for yeah. that. They're not great rhythm guitar because they're kind of hard to yeah. hang on to. But beautiful. But then you do that thing where you do like the 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 that tuning or like sort of half Nashville tuning on the guitar where, and then you can make it just almost sound like a piano because you know the range of the guitar, the guitar is like you know this and you mm -hmm. know you can't get those. That's the thing that's great about piano. You get those real rumbly, you know low notes and then those super mm -hmm. high you know like those bill evans voicings where the things sure. are like separated by like five octaves you, know, you can't just yeah, can't yeah. do that on guitar you know? i'm sure there's a pedal for that though <laughs> oh there is <laughs> <laughs> there's an app there's nice an app carry. for that on the iphone yeah. <laughs> well it's interesting you know what playing charts written by keyboard players and playing them written by guitar players as a vibe player is very different and i play with a mm -hmm. guy in town a lot his big band bruce lofgren and it took me a while to realize but when he was saying a sus chord he really meant like e flat over f that's mm -hmm. as a guitar player that's just to him that's what it was whereas a keyboard player would think of a sus chord a little differently it's just interesting just here's here's something i don't know we're probably i know we're running over but here's okay. something for you guys this has always been an interesting debate for me so if you see a chord that's written like g and then a seven with a line through the seven like a line that crosses through the seven. Like Carrie, what does that mean to you? I've never is seen it, a G is, seven with a line going through the seven. Yeah, like I've seen a G like, and then seven with okay. a line through it. Does that mean G dominant seven or G major seven to you? Or, or nothing at all? I've never seen that. Um, okay. Is that a Nashville? I don't know, I've never, I've never seen that, that writing no. before. Dave, what do you and your cat think of that? What is your yeah. interpretation? Of I have that? seen I have seen that um, chord. I'm curious now. For, for sure, and I've seen it in old style real books, but I've seen it in charts, you know. And I, to mm -hmm. me, that means major seventh. Well, I have, major okay. seventh. I have I mean, a comment. I in England, yeah, Billy. That's yeah. how they do regular sevens. So in England, Do that is a dominant seventh. Yes. Huh. Oh, so. Really? Over here, I always, I guess I've been it's supposed it to be a shortcut for major seven, major seven, but the, uh, the mm -hmm. so Lad McIntosh tells a story about his British the piano player came dominant. over. British piano yeah. player came over and saw the slashes and just thought they were sevens. He says, that's just yeah. a seven. I've always known I, those as major seven chords as well, and then I was doing a gig with uh, Scott Kinsey, who's not English, um, mm -hmm. but uh, I had a, and I had a chart uh, written out for something, and, and it was like major sevens, and he was playing dominance, and I was like, "That's you know, those are major sevens. And he was, he was like, "No, well, this means a dominant seven. <laughs> huh. So I've never, so yeah. yeah. I mean, there's yeah. the triangle. You know, the triangle means yeah. major seven. Yeah. And but well, uh, yeah, that's a new one for me. Years ago in school, everyone. Lad McIntosh had this little book because there is no standardized chord signature thing. But he had a book where the guy had this incredibly methodic way about how you can never, ever, ever be confusing. And it just like, yeah. if you wanted to be a major seven, write M-A-J. That's what I do not, now. Not or, capital or M and small M for major minor, because you can't see what they're writing. M-I-N or M-I and M-A-J. He just had this whole thing about, and where you put the seven and the 13 and how it affected the third, if it's in this, it was really a, but you know, it's hard to standardize something that's never been standardized, so. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, I kind of, we have a little bit of time because people don't seem to mind if we go a little over. Friends uh, of Urban Cats says Triad's fancy. So thank you, <laughs> Friends of Urban Cats. Uh -huh. um, yeah. uh, everybody seems to like the cat. That is now the best part of. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, can <laughs> Steve <laughs> Durgan yeah. says, there goes Jamie adding more notes. <laughs> Totally. <laughs> Steve is a good buddy of all of ours. So, it's, hey, but I just want you know, to get a chance to play some clips. I, you know, Kerry was here, and, you know, we he was supposed to play beginning of February, I think, with the trio. Yeah, we Tuesday. pushed that gig back, and, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen because of this new California strain. We just don't know how, when it's going to be safe to have people back in. But while Kerry is logging back in, I'm just going to play you uh, the little clip I have of him playing. It was the Rump Roller Organ Trio. But it was just a duo that night. Let me just play this little clip.
Yeah, that was the Rump Roller Oregon Trail, yeah. which we had to, we were going to do the Christmas gig, the holiday show That's with right. you guys. We couldn't do that. <laughs> and I apologize, but these guys have had such patience pushing things back because we all want to be safe. That's things okay. Getting, getting yeah, we get it. Here. There are more and more people that I that know. That was a great night. Getting it. and Yeah. So, yeah, and then the other clip I wanted to play was, I haven't played the Sinclair clip yet. Let me just throw this up here real quick. Where are you? Sinclair clip. Here you are playing with uh, Jeff Miley and uh, Blake White. Blake White. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're swinging. Yeah. Kind of pretty jazzy, man. Cool. So I think, man, uh, well, great. I just want a couple more shouts. Oh, Bettina, my good friend Bettina. Hi there. She just sent you guys a tip. And then K, last name O, sent a tip. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, Catherine, I guess, okay. is that who that was. So cool. Thank you guys. You know, I don't want to go too late. And Jamie, I know you got to bounce really soon. So when you got to split, just wave, say farewell, and, and uh, go ahead and cut your cut your camera but great having you jamie we'll have a lot of these guys back it we end up talking more and more each show and i want to give everybody a chance to play twice but uh any, either carrie you or sinclair want to play something else uh sure yeah i'll do a quick one okay let's let's um take it away carrie okay let me change cameras okay uh this is um softly as in a morning sunrise. Is that volume okay, Billy? Yes. Cool. Thank you. 
Kathy Very Super nice. Garcia. Hey, Kathy. Uh, she says, go, carry, go. Just <laughs> don't go away. She, I think she meant something other than <laughs> logging off there. <laughs> but uh, um, OK, Gary, back. Kathy Siegel Garcia said, go, carry, go. Uh, <laughs> and then Ralph Battle loved that patch. And also, Ralph had a question for Sinclair. He says, were you into Al Foster? Of course. I mean, I've never transcribed him, but he is. I've heard him play many times, uh, particularly with Miles Davis's group later, one of his later electric groups. Unbelievable. Yeah, cool. So yes. Um, let's see, there's so many people uh, chiming in. It's, it's harder when I'm actually interviewing to read. When the vans are playing, it's easy for me to respond. So sorry, I'm a little sluggish in the chat rooms tonight, but uh, it's been a good crowd. Uh, Jamie, did you want to play anything else for us? or? I'm, I'm actually going to have to, to bounce uh, on out of here, but I it's understand. been a lot of fun, and it's been great seeing all of you, and you all sound wonderful. And uh, Yeah, Jamie, and, uh, wonderful. Yeah. It's been great seeing you, Jamie. Really, yeah. really yeah, good to see you, man. Yeah, you too, Dave. Carrie. It's been and, like Yeah, eight. it's like, yeah, out of touch. I didn't know Carrie moved. I, I don't, I'm basically, I live in a cave. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. It's yeah. been well, like we all do. years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Feels all like right, it. guys. Well, Hope to see you all soon, and uh, take care of yourselves. Billy, thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon, James. Yeah, yeah, have a good night. Okay, guys. Say hey to Britain Bye -bye. for me. <laughs> Will do. Bye. Okay. Uh, yeah, Billy, thanks very much. For sure. Thank you, guys. Did you want to do a little, everybody. Did you want to play a little solo for us, Sink, before you, before you head out? Okay. Talk okay, to me, too. Let's, let's, let's see what uh, Sinclair has for us. What's he got in store for us today? Nice thing, Claire. <laughs> I like a little bit of crash album. banging and boom. Yeah, uh, people are digging it. They they uh, they like uh, they they like the drums. It's kind of fun. I you know when I first did the first night we did was all guitar players and I, I wasn't sure, but we took a little poll, a little survey. Not a lot of people filled it out, but they were most interested in a lot of different uh, musicians. Next was guitar night, and next was percussion night. Which was above keyboard. You had drums, one of those, right? Yeah. Horns, and then at the bottom was an all vocal night. But uh, you know, let me just do one thing before we split. I just want to talk about the upcoming shows. 
this is the plan uh, for the next couple of weeks. Bill Fulton, Nick Mancini, the vibe player, Anthony mm -hmm. Boncera, trumpet, keyboards, guitar, vocals, everything, and are going to play. And Jeff Miley's going to come back. Then we also have uh, the week after that, the Valentine's Day Couples Night, jazz couples. So Larry Steen, as uh, you may know, is a bass player who's played here before. Uh, Joey DeLeon and Micah Miller and To Be Determined, the ever popular To Be Determined are, are coming. So that should be a lot of fun. I don't know why my graphics cut off and why my, my photo isn't up there, but I got to talk to the graphics department here so we can't get that cleaned up. But that should be fun the next couple of weeks. I was kind of hoping by the third week of February we'd be back with live bands. So I've got some calls out. We'll uh, announce who is coming in to do that when we can. And hopefully, you know, I don't mind repeating people because we all have so much. You guys all have so much to talk about. So, uh, but let's see. Just the hey, last Billy. couple of things. David Anders said that was beautiful, Sinclair, and a lot of comments. Oh, Toby man. Simmons, David, Ralph, thank you so much. All the regulars yeah. are clapping up a storm. So I apologize if we had some trouble with the YouTube connection, but uh, everything else is good. Any parting words from anyone? Man, I just like to say, dry, Billy, stay safe. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks so much for providing this opportunity, Billy, for, for, I mean, serving not only uh, musicians, but other people that are music fans to t tune in. This is really a unique and cool experience. Well, uh, yeah, thank you. It, Very much it, so. It's a lot of and fun. And I don't think, I, and, I, and no one realizes how much work Billy is putting into this. <laughs> you know, I realize. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> No, Maybe your neighbors. Lot. Yeah, no. Well, it's funny because my neighbor next door is just—he just loves it when the bands come over to play. And he'll stop in the drive mm -hmm. and say, well, "When are we going to do a front?" You know, uh, uh, Dave Hill and I were talking about doing some. Oh yeah. Front. I uh, met that yeah. guy. Call them front lawn concerts or right. you know front. Yeah. Uh, well, if he feeds concerts. us, we'll keep. If he feeds us, we'll keep coming back. So uh, I would like Definitely. to keep this going, and <laughs> maybe as the weather warms up, we can do some Sunday afternoon driveway concerts outside to get some yeah. neighbors involved, and that's what I think would be That'd be, be awesome. Uh, again, wow. we just, I, I did this because I wanted to have a safe place for people to play and mm -hmm. uh, make some money in tips and that sort of thing. I, I, I haven't... Uh, the Jim, thank you, Jim, you tipped also. Mike and Tricia, Michael's a good friend of mine, he tipped as well. Steve Durgan tipped again, and thank you, Steve. All right. He and Ginger are regulars, and we've known them for years. So thank you, everybody. Uh, I think we're just going to say good night now. I've got a cool video to play introducing all the guys from next week. If you want to stay for 40 seconds and watch that, that would be awesome. Uh, and thank you, Phil and Joe and, and Toby and everybody in the rooms. It's nice to the chatting. And I, sorry, I get a little behind when I'm interviewing. I can't type as much. So, But thank you all. And I'm going to play the outro. And we will see you all soon. Thanks for joining us at Live at Zero BPM. These videos will be archived on YouTube and Facebook, so tell your friends. Coming up on Thursday, February 4th, it's the Live at Zero BPM Socially Distant Jazz Roundtable, featuring Bill Fulton, Nick Mancini, Anthony Boncera, and Jeff Miley. Showtime, 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And as always, it's free! Though donations are greatly appreciated. Go to live at zeropm.com for details and to sign up for our mailing list. Also, find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See you soon!